Okay, I'd like to read this letter. Effective immediately, due to health related issues over the past year, I regretfully resigned my position as mayor of New Paris. I would like to thank council and all those who supported me in the past 13 years and to thank you for the opportunity to serve our, serve our committee. Um, <clears throat> and I would like to uh, sincerely thank Bill Hoffman for everything he's done for the community and leading us as mayor of the village. Uh, I, I, along with I hope everybody else in the village, will drop in the line and wish him well uh, with this uh, uh, <clears throat> current health issues and try and, uh, and fill the shoes. It's going to be a tough task to do, but we'll give it a shot. Uh, I'm going to amend the uh, <clears throat> agenda tonight. Uh, Susan had another meeting, so Susan, you're up first. Okay, thank you. Um, basically, I'm here this evening to um, kind of address you in regards to the Washington Street project. Um, we began the field work this week, um, and it, since we're not really doing any street reconstruction, it really won't take too long for us to do that uh, process. Um, I did talk to Brian today, and he'll be doing his locates for the services tomorrow, so we'll be back to pick those up. Um, I anticipate that we'll probably have the plans done by the 1st to the middle of March, and then we'll be ready to proceed into bidding. Um, I have been in contact with Kim Keller, and she asked if there was any way we could do the East Main Street part first because she needs to spend her money in relationship to them submitting their next application to the state for county allocation funds. So um, I told her I didn't think that would be a problem. Basically, all we would do is just when we sat down with the contract at the pre-construction meeting, we'd just indicate to them that we wanted them to do that part first. So it's not really a big deal. Uh, you know, we can handle, you know, that with the contractor here would be low bid. Um, the thing that we kind of need to address um, at this point right now is the tree removal. We do have some trees that need to come down. Um, in the past, um, we've done that where we just had hired somebody to come in and take the trees down because it was a lot cheaper than doing it through the bid where they hire somebody to come do it anyway and then they tack 15% on. Um, in the past, we've gotten some bids, and then we've just had somebody come in. They cut them off with a two-foot stump, if you ever remember the other projects. And then those um, that uh, bill will go through a high public works commission, and they'll pay um, their percentage of the grant money of that bill. Or you can pay it as part of your local share to, make, to pay the tree person faster. And then we would just apply that towards your local share as we go down, you know, through the project. So we can do it either way. Um, it's it's been a good thing simply because you've been able to do it cheaper, which leaves more money for the actual project. The other thing is when we use federal funds like we have on East Main Street, we have to, we have some environmental um, conditions that we have to deal with, and that has to do with the Indiana bat, and that is a um, endangered species. And you can't cut any kind of shag bark trees after April 1st and through September 15th because it's the roosting place for the bat. Now, who wants bats in their downtown? I haven't really figured that part out yet. But so we do kind of have that situation, although we've got plenty of time. Uh, I just kind of felt like now would probably be the time to start um, thinking about getting some bids from some tree people to take the trees down. And then that way we can kind of move on with that part. Then the actual stumps will be a part of the contract that's bid from the contractor. And when they come in with their tracker, they'll just dig them right out of there and then, you know, do, do their curb and their sidewalk work. And that's kind of how we've done the last two projects and it seemed to work, you know, fairly well. So um, that's kind of something I wanted to bring up to you was if well, you wanted me to get some tree bids, if you know somebody that you'd like to have get the tree bids. Well, we have people that uh, we can get bids from. Okay. Uh, uh, one individual here in town that we've used in the past that has already uh, inquired about it. Okay. And so uh, and we can put the bids out there. Okay. A couple of local people and we can use that as our income. Okay. And if you want, I can have our people come down and paint an X on the trees. Yes. If that would be helpful. Yes. And then that way when they go to look at what the trees are to give you a price, they'll know exactly what we're talking about. Um, I think there's probably going to be six down on this end and probably two down on the south end just based on you know some preliminary numbers. So they'll probably be about eight. And the cost to have those trees taken down was part of the project. So I mean it was all part of what we applied for. 
So that, that was one thing I wanted to talk to you about. The other thing had to do with the coal chutes on the East Main Street project. There's some coal chutes along there. And we need to decide whether we want to fill those in or what we want to do with those. I think one of them, and I think it's the one, the building that Earl's brother owns or owned, I think it has, goes to the basement. And that's like the only way to get in that basement. Does that ring a bell? He does ring a bell. No. He put an access in. Okay, so, okay. Because yeah, they had a ladder. I went down a ladder one time to get down to the bottom there. Okay. All right, well, we need to decide if we want to do something and fill those in and then just put sidewalk over them or whether you still want to have some type of an opening there. We may need to talk to those building owners um, as to you know what they want to do there. Um, it's just you know it's just something we need to address between now and the time that we you know put the bids out. I've been in them and I personally think they should be filled up. Okay. That's what I've done in the past. Um, I did a downtown project in another community and we just filled them in. But I'm not sure that Probably one will be an issue, but in, in, the, in the Willie's case, you know, we're going to have to put a wall up there before we fill mm -hmm. it in, so, you know, that would fall on part of the project, correct? Right, yes, it yeah. would be. Yeah, I put money in the budget to deal with those coal shoots, so there's money there to kind of deal with those. I guess I just, before we did anything, I wanted to be sure everybody, you know, the owners understood what we were doing, they were okay with it. You know, after something's done, it's not the time to deal with it. You know, the time to deal with it's up front, just so that everybody understands what we're going to do and everybody's okay with it. I'll, I'll make contact with the owners up there. Okay. I don't know what we're about to do. I don't think okay. there would be an issue with that, but I can't see putting new sidewalks over there. If somebody forgets, drop something heavy up there, it's going to be a lot of safety. You know, unless they're used for something, I don't see any reason to keep them. You know, normally, you know, that's this is kind of the time to get rid of them, so to speak. But, you know, at the same token, I, I want to just be sure that we, you know, don't create some type of a hostile problem because somebody, you know, wasn't aware of it or didn't want it done or we need to talk to them about it. That's all. So, um, and then the other thing, um, I did attend the... Um, county CDBG uh, public hearing that was held last week. There are some changes going on with the CDBG program and the fact that now they're, instead of it being called the formula program, it's now called the allocation program. And they did away with 25 cities in the state of Ohio and put them in with the county allotment. And if you remember, Eaton was actually thrown into the county allotment about a year ago. Well, now they've taken more communities Anything under 15,000 was thrown into the county allotment. Doesn't really affect Preble County, um, but the other thing that's happening is they're taking the neighborhood revitalization program, the downtown program, and they've created a new program called Critical Infrastructure, which nobody knows for sure exactly what that's about. And those applications all have to be submitted at the same time as the allocation application now. They're not open rounds for the downtown anymore and then this critical infrastructure they're supposed to come out with a guidance document on March 1st to let us know kind of what that is so I just wanted to let you know that there are some changes going on there in those programs um, I don't know that you're necessarily in a position to want to move forward on any of those but I just want to make you aware of those and as things come up you know I'm always here to try to help find grant money to you know solve your issues so Anyway, that's all I really have this evening. I'm really just related to the trees, so I will have um, we'll have the trees marked, and then if you want to get a hold of some people to get some bids, that would be great. And if we could, is your March meeting going to be on the fourth? Uh, actually, no. It's okay. going to be probably the thirteenth. Okay, that's fine. So. so if we can have those by then. Yeah. Then you know, usually most of those people can come in and do it pretty quick. And you might tell them when you get their bids that we need to have the trees down by April 1st. And that'd still give them two and a half weeks to get it done. And I don't think it'll take more than probably three or four days. Okay. Uh, or we can do it sooner if we get a couple of bids in and choose one. Can we not? And that's up to you. Yeah. Sure you can. Okay. Absolutely. So. Um, Take room for yeah, I don't want to, you know, right. I was thinking if you had it here, then we'd have, yeah, we'd have a whole know, month I, to get it done. Get, That's all. Know, possibility of a couple individuals uh, putting them under the gun there for sure, a sure. couple of weeks is, mm -hmm. could be a little tough for some individuals. So I understand. We'll try and get that as soon as possible. Okay. That's fine. Well, let me know if I can help you with that in all any right. way, shape, or form. Marketing trees would be great. Okay. So. Yeah, we can do that, and then that way it'll, there won't be any, any question about who's bidding what. So, And that's all I have.
Does anybody have any questions for me? Did the coal shoots that you did in front of the Mason's uh, Masonic Lodge this last time, was that over and above that project? I wasn't on the council at that time, but they filled that coal shoot in up there, but I didn't know whether that... It was part of the project. Sonic Lodge or whether it was part of the project. It was part of the project. They did a nice job on that, worked out great. Okay, very good, thank you. Yeah, so uh, okay. I would think the rest of the people would want to do that too if they could. Right, I mean, it's, it's kind of the time to address it, obviously, yeah. so... And they can get it addressed kind of for free. <laughs> so I wouldn't think they'd be too, uh, you know, have too much of an adverse feeling. Right, right. That's so the only thing I'd really want to be sure. It really wasn't a bad deal. Right. It was a good deal for them, but I didn't know where that was yes. above and beyond what you figured. No, it was part of the project. And I figured those cool shoots into the project as well, so. Okay. All right. Thank, Thank you very much. You're welcome. Thank you. Uh, Thank you. Sure. Did you have a, uh, in the next few days, any time for you that I could come up and meet with? You sure can, or I can come down here if that'd be easier uh, just for you. Let me know one day you're free, and that would be a good time. I'd like to come up and have a conversation. Okay. Um, I know I'm in the office all day tomorrow. I don't have any meetings. Friday, I have a meeting in the afternoon. Okay. So uh, tomorrow afternoon is okay? Yep. You tell me what time you want to be there. Uh, Two o'clock. That'll work. Right. I'll be there. Do you and know where our office is at? Um, if you, it's on. It's 214 West 4th Street. Um, if you come in on 121, just take 121 into Greenville, yeah. and you kind of come up there to where the four points is, and mm -hmm. there's like a medicine, the yeah. pharmacies here, just kind of hang a left right there, and that turns into 4th Street when you go around the curve. Uh -huh. And then, uh, do you know where Memorial Hall is by any chance? Mm -hmm. The junior high, the library. Oh, yeah. Okay, yeah. we are right across the street from those three buildings okay. on 4th Street on the opposite side. All right. And there's a sign out front that says Moan Associates. Okay. okay? You. You're welcome. No problem. Thank you. Okay, has everyone had a chance to uh, read the minutes from last meeting? If so, I need a motion to accept. I'll make a motion to accept the minutes from last meeting. I'll second. Roll call, please. Kim. Yes. <laughs> Bill. Yeah. Ralph. Yes. And Joe. Yes. Okay, if uh, there's no uh, changes, I need approval for warrants and time sheets. To be accepted, please. Motion. I make a motion to approve the warrants and payroll time sheets. I'll second it. Roll call, please. Ralph. Yes. Bill. Yes. Joe. Yes. Yeah. The approval for the transfer of police revenue from the general fund to the police fund. And the amount of two seventy, correct? Two hundred seventy dollars. Mm -hmm. Need a motion? I'll make a motion to approve the transfer of police revenue from the general fund to the police fund amount of two seventy. I'll second. Roll call, please. Thank you. Susan. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Susan. Yes. 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 Need a motion to approve the police fund, uh, the police fund, the monthly operating fund transfer. I'll, I'll make a motion to approve the police fund monthly operating funds transfer. I'll second. Roll call, please. Joe. Yes. Tim. Yes. Bill. Yes. Brown. Yes. Need a motion for the approval of interest transfer. I'll make a motion for the interest transfer. I second. Roll call, please. Kim. Yes. Brown. Yes. Bill. Yes. And Jeff. Yes. Okay, uh, uh, we had a representative from uh, uh, BPNL that was showed up last week, but we didn't have a form. Uh, you will find in your packets. Uh, some literature uh, from uh, EPNL Energy. And uh, they will have a representative here for our next meeting. So if you would take the time to look over uh, that amendment, they would like to uh, have an amendment to put on to the uh, original agreement, uh, and they will really explain that. But basically, what it amounts to is that uh, they now have like 
80 or 85 people that is available to sign up with the on Energy at our really good rate that they give us for savings. Uh, and uh, they want to uh, be able to uh, ask those people to come on board with the on Energy and the rest of the village. And if someone has been with another outfit and their time is up and PCO keeps track of that, somehow or another DPL is able to pull those names out or tell us there's like 65 to 80 people that qualifies and they want to make an amendment to that <coughs> to our original contract so they can offer to those people. So that's basically what will be but they will be here with the representative next uh, next meeting and they will uh, discuss <coughs> the uh, savings that took place up to date for, for on an average of the village people here in town. So uh, that would be a nice informal meeting. So right. this DPL energy resources that's separate than this DPNL, right? So yeah, it's DPNL company. energy, yes. So this is a company that should have been billing the residents right now. Yeah, DPNL energy, yes. I better check that because I don't ever remember my bill ever changing at all. Mm -hmm. all right, so yeah, 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 yeah that'll be here yeah. next month. So just again we time this this work to look over. Uh, the the uh, amendment that they'd like to do is on the second page there, the front page of the original. So. I think the bill, the look of the bill, mm -hmm. stay the same. Right. I mean, right. it, you're not going to see a, like a All right, I just want to make sure yeah. it, reads, it reads off in there, though, that part of that bill has went to the energy side of that DPL. You know, okay. In a fine print, per se, I guess, instead of the logo and the heading and all that, stayed the same. Did we have to sign up for that? Or it, it was supposed to be automatic. Was well, to actually, originally, the way it was is they give you an option to start with, either in or out. Right. And the, the minute they'd like to do now is they would just like to send that to those people that, that's available now. And if they do not respond, then they would automatically go to it. I think that's the way it went with us. Too. Well, originally, you had to opt out to yeah. get out. Right. Otherwise, right. right. if you did nothing, then you were a part of the group. When they first started, it was you had an option to say no or yes. But what they would like to do now, say the paperwork and stuff, is say, send it out here and say, okay, here it is. If you do not reply back, then you will automatically come into the savings group. Right. So it's just a little bit of a same rate, same everything. It's just they need some uh, approval uh, to be able to do it that way instead of the way they did it the first time. So they're going to review the savings. That yes, they'll have numbers for us and everything. And, uh, so. Supposedly, they're going to contact the other 85 or so call numbers. We don't have to do that as a body here. No, we do not. They do. They handle everything there. And like I say, that P, through the PUCO and all that, you know, they have a list of people. That, you know, you've got all kinds of aggregates out there that you can choose. And some people were already involved with an aggregate at the time that this went into effect. And I think it runs for six months at a time, or just, if I remember correctly. So now there's a period of time where people was has the opportunity or either dropped out of the other aggregate or have the opportunity to join this and so that's what they're after. They 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 have that all on the computer and stuff, you know, so anyway they'll be here for that. Okay, committee safety. Uh, the police department handled 92 calls for service in January with 28 reports, made seven arrests, issued eleven citations 21 warnings and we found the two vehicles. Uh, one thing I'd like to mention that's not on the list here is we do have the uh, prescription uh, take back box, which is located in the police department uh, for old medications that are outdated that people no longer want. Um, we had it in there for just about a month and we collected almost two pounds of pills <coughs> during that month. We can just bring them in any time during business hours and drop them off in there. I was going to mention that to you all last month and I forgot about it. Then where do they go from there? Uh, we actually contract, the, the state contracts with, in, uh, with a, <coughs> uh, I can't think of what it's called now. They incinerate them. We take them to pick up and it's a and state they, program. Though, yes, it's, it's a state called. program. It doesn't cost us anything at all. And uh, last month, we department. Um, they had an officer come up and pick them up and then they took them up there and dropped them off. So we're going to kind of rotate throughout the county 
where you know we have to do it quarterly for the first two years. So every quarter, uh, a different agency will transport them up there, and we just have to stand by while they incinerate them so that we know they're being destroyed and, and all that. So, um, so last month we took it with two pounds in, and we've had a couple people come in within the last couple of days and drop off um, bags of old medication. So uh, if anybody asks you about that, it's in the police department. It's over during business hours. So streets here. Uh, last meeting, the uh, council uh, gave approval to me to, uh, you know, we had discussions about needing to replace the, the smaller dump truck, and the council gave permission to go ahead for a fact-finding on that. Uh, this is what we've come up with. We, we do have a bid from Valley Ford out of Cleveland on the truck that we're looking at. The uh, the price on it, uh, I think I originally stated last meeting was like 49 something. Or the price has increased because of the new model. Also, uh, originally we talked about a diesel engine, and the diesel was going to be about another uh, $8,500 for the diesel. And when we asked them about the fuel mileage, they, they said there was little or no change between the V10 gas and the diesel. So we eliminated the diesel on the quote. The quote uh, has come in at $52,523. I had originally told the council that Eaton National Bank said that we could have a one point seven five interest rate, I believe it was, I reported. Unfortunately, uh, when Amy, uh, the Eaton National took it to their uh, loan office up there, they had to classify it as a commercial vehicle. So the interest rate now is 3.5 instead of 1.75. The uh, <coughs> payment on uh, the 52523 
three will be on a six year payback at uh, an annual payment of $9,873.10. That is basically, we was paying right, uh, we was paying 9000 for the street sweeper, which has been paid off. So we're a few hundred dollars more than what uh, we was on the street sweeper. Uh, I would like to know council's uh, billing on this as the part that we want to continue with this and go ahead and uh, purchase this truck, which I definitely feel like we need to do. At this interest rate, and the fact that our truck is just simply getting wore out, that's all there is to it. So uh, I will need uh, councils to approval to proceed with this or whatever they choose to do. Quick question Is there any trade in on our truck uh, offered, or what no. are there plans for that? Or? That, that would I would say that we just put up as an option. Okay. Yeah. Um, what is the, is the fuel mileage? Same as what we got now, or is it a little better? No, it's better now. They said about 12 miles, 10 to 12 miles in the city. We're doing about six now, is what we're doing. So, that's a pretty, pretty big increase. Uh, I think it's something we need, we need to do. I mean, we need, we need to keep our equipment updated. And, uh, at the same time, we need to find a utility to <coughs> drive around where we don't put so much wear and tear and mileage on this thing where it lasts a little longer. I agree with that, uh, and I tell you that uh, the hopes would be to, <clears throat> we have looked into, two years ago, I was given the authority on the streets to pur purchase one of those uh, John Deere, uh, pardon me? Gator. Gators, yes. And which, if you look around, most villages and most cities, that's what they're using now because they can run them all day on, on a gallon of gas. And we do have a quote on that to present to council for their to be thinking about. the deal around uh, Oxford down there. And this also is a quote through the state, uh, uh, state, bid list. state bid list where we get a discount and everything on that. And uh, this vehicle is a diesel and uh, it has comes with all the uh, safety equipment and everything on it. Uh, for council to think about, the bid on this is $15,106.97. I don't know what council's feelings will be on that. There, that Again, would be coming out of the street department. I want to clarify that too. The street, the street fund is is healthy, and that yes. we can only use it for things that, that pertain to the streets. We can't transport it for the police or general fund or anything like that. It has to, to remain for the street items. That, that is correct. And the, the street fund is healthy on this. Uh, you know, if we're going to buy, in my opinion. If we're going to buy a new truck, we want to preserve that truck for as long as possible. And when we can get 35, you know, when we can run all day on a gallon of gas at 35 miles a gallon versus 10 or 12, it doesn't take long. In about three years' time, after this, in about three years' time, on the fourth year, this thing starts paying itself for itself just in fuel. So it's uh, something the council will think about. Or, 
that it might be secret that's or not. The gator is to be purchased outright out of funds to the street department, and then the, the dump truck is to be financed. Is that how that's going to go? No, no they both will be financed. So both will be financed out of the street department fund, yes. Now, I do not have a quote on the payment on this gator because I just wanted to bring it to council and see what they thought about it. Is it worth exploring a used, used gator? We've got people around here that could work on these things. And is that something that we're looking into? Or? That's what council will choose to decide here, but my personal opinion is you're going to find somebody else's problems. Well, the gator itself probably won't be used for about six months at that time of the year either. Um, well, you know, actually, I close it up or whatever. No, actually, I think about. I think you're going to get closer to nine months out of it. Quite frankly, yeah. yeah. I mean, even right now, mm -hmm. this is good. this thing is, has a cab and heat. I mean, there's no reason as long as the streets are. So the one that you're figuring on is enclosed in. Oh yeah, there's pictures of it here and uh, everything. I mean, it's it's got a heater in it. It's enclosed cab. Okay. Uh, there's no reason why this thing can't be used, you know, uh, uh, nine months out of the year. I mean, and really, and that basically comes back to saving the new truck for snow removal and re leaf removal. I mean, if we purchase a gator in a, in a little trailer, that should be able to, to allow Billy to do just about anything he needs to do in the village as far as picking up limbs, painting streets, whatever he needs to be doing. Uh, and that will just save wear and tear, and eventually it will start paying for itself just for people's sake. So. How, how are you going to decide? Is that up to Billy to decide when to drive one and when to drive the other? Well, Billy has pretty much common sense, but right. he, I mean, yes, I would leave that up to Billy. Billy's really good about it. I mean, I, I don't want No, I understand that. You can't I, I sit very well and sit here and mandate, okay, you can yeah. drive this today for this, this, well, and that. Well, I was more wondering what the. Um, the jobs that you would have to go out on for. I mean, I guess, you know, something bigger, you take the truck and- Actually, you know, Billy checks when, when we have when we have rainstorms, he goes around, cleans the, the, the storage drains out, you know, he's up and uh, picking up limbs after a storm. All the run around he does all day long, here and there, all over right. the place with the truck. I mean, it's, it's, it's a lot of running in that truck. Cause this thing looks like it can do a, Heck of a workload too. It could, and, and if you look around, most villages and most cities have went to these things simply because they're economical as crap to operate versus the big trucks. I mean, and even what? Camden has one, Eaton is full of them, Richmond. I mean, just about everybody uses them simply from the fact that they're economical. You can get gas, but I don't. I, 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 there's not a whole lot of difference. I don't think Joe. I don't have a quote on the gas, but usually the gas are not near as powerful as the diesel in those, in those machines. The one you're looking at is a tandem axle or single axle. Uh, Four wheel drive. <coughs> yeah. About. What is that? Well, that's uh, food for thought for the council. Uh, you know, if you, you want to think about it or whatever you choose to do. So, uh, well, I, I'd like to go ahead and make a motion that the uh, make a purchase on the truck. Second, uh, roll call. Hey, uh, Ralph. Yes. Tim. Yes. Bill. Yes. And Joe. Yes. Okay, we'll proceed with ordering that at the council. And you can be thinking about the rest of it here for uh, maybe next meeting. Uh, what's your opinion on your thoughts on that, please? <clears throat> Lights. As far as I know, that they're all working unless somebody's got some up. So, our Jane, that one I told you about the bank, last night it wasn't working. Tonight it is working. I don't know how to fix that. <laughs> but the other one, the other one on Lincoln Street that I told you about is working and still working. So uh, I don't know what to do about going down the back. Maybe somebody just switches it off and on, I guess. I don't know. <laughs> but it is working as of tonight, so I, that's all I can tell you. Other than that, I think the rest of it is really just operating properly. <coughs> okay, finance? Joe? Yeah. Um, 
presentation? No, <laughs> yeah, I don't. Uh, probably my fault. I didn't hear anything from Mary Jane. I gave her. She's still uh, recuperating, that's so that's, that's understandable. Yeah, exactly. so, trust me, there's always something on sanitation she's working on, but it's a slow process. So okay. you will learn as <laughs> okay. planning has. Uh, uh, one thing under planning that I will bring to council. I don't know how many people have had the opportunity to read the Les Delix uh, zoning uh, book. Uh, I, we have some uh, uh, ordinances that are missing from moves, and I think that uh, I would like to have council uh, the ones that have not looked at the book. I would like one to be ready for. Um, a vote on whether they want to adopt uh, West Alex zoning book, which is more up to date than ours, a lot more legible and easier to read with uh, diagrams and everything. Uh, I would uh, like to be able to um, hear a motion on that next month, if possible, for the ones that haven't had a chance to look at it yet. The book is out here, and what'd you say, Ralph? Billy really Killing Box. Box. Yeah, Billy yeah. really Box. It's a white binder. It's a white binder book for those. That I haven't had a chance, Joe. I think maybe you looked at it. I don't know where I've looked at it. I, I would like the rest of the council to take a look at it and voice any concerns or opinions. And hopefully, we can have a, um, a vote on that next month, please. EPA. Assuming all these people are sworn in and you know they're appointed to the council. Here. The only elected official you have is Mary Jane Thomas and yourself. And under the laws of Ohio, the mayor has to be an elected official. So whoever you appoint to, to this mayor pro tem will only be temporary if, if he had to take you or she had to take over his mayorship until you had elections. And I'm sure you know this, but this had to come up, so I thought it'd make no difference. Yes, we're aware of the fact that uh, uh, I've been sworn in as pro tem mayor, and I have the I can either I can either remain in this position through Neil's term, which is 2015, or yes. if we choose, we can put it on the ballot. Yes, uh, we we're not going to put one on the special ballot, but we don't have the money for that. But I'm I'm not here to say that there will not be that position on the ballot when the primaries come due. But according to our solicitor, the seat that I vacated has to be filled. And we have a time frame of 60 days on that, according to the solicitor. In the meantime, we need to elect uh, a president of council in case something else takes place uh, that that person will step in as pro tem. So if we have anybody that would like to uh, uh, recommend anyone,
Anything else under uh, new business that we need to address is uh, this is a letter uh, from Northwest Fire uh, Hamlet's District. Uh, it's addressed to the mayor, uh, Lou Ferris, uh, and it's uh, from Mr. Uh, <coughs> Douglas. And uh, Neil also uh, has uh, resigned from his position on the uh, Northwest Fire and Hamlet's uh, board. And uh, the way this board is set up, you have two people from the village, two people from the township, and two, yeah. large, two people at large, one at large, five, one is thinking, one at large that is uh, in that uh, position. So we need to uh, fill uh, Neil's uh, seat. And I have a letter here addressed to uh, the council myself. I would like to submit for your approval the name of Mr. Ralph Duncan of 506 East Cherry Street, New Paris, as a candidate to represent the village of New Paris on the Board of Trustees for the Northwest Fire and Ambulance Districts, replacing Mr. Bill Hoffman, who has resigned due to health. I feel that his many years as firefighter, Mr. Duncan knowledge, will be a huge asset for our district. Upon your approval, Mr. Duncan will be submitted to the Northwest Fire and Amlitz District Board of Trustees for their approval on Monday, February the 11th. Well, unfortunately, we missed that because of the meeting of the end of 2013. I will submit the result of the Board of Trustees vote to you before your next meeting. Mr. Douglas. Uh, I would like to uh, recommend to council that uh, we, we Approve Mr. Duncan for this position, and if uh, council sees uh, uh, fit with that, or if council has anyone else that they would like to nominate, if not, I would like to have a motion to uh, Mr. Duncan to have this position. I, I move that uh, we appoint Ralph for the uh, trustee position. Roll call. Okay, Kim? Yes. Bill? Yes. And uh, yes. Congratulations, Thank you. Thank you. We already talked to him and I read him up, and we're going to accept him. So okay. we're going to vote the rest now. But we're still going to have to vote on it for the next meeting. But uh, so, right. yeah. okay. we run a background check on him. We run a blood check on him. We run a drug check on him. We run a personality check. We run a truck check. The only detrimental thing we found is he drove the ship. <laughs> You know, the good thing about this is uh, finding somebody who's been on there before is there's, nobody comes in with a, you know, a, a, something on their shoulders or something. And uh, to be able to do things properly with the experiences that these guys have got that we're getting now. We got Larry uh, Whalen as a consultant. We can't put him on as a trustee because he don't live in the so we got him as a consultant. He's got 25 years in the W, 20 some years, you know. We're, it kind of gives us a, a good base to do this. Oh, I, so think, I appreciate it. I think it's a good fit. So. Okay. I have a uh, program here from Bolton Associates with the Susan's firm. And they are going to have a seminar Tuesday, February 26th. Uh, it looks like it's an all-day thing, 9 o'clock or 4 o'clock. Uh, and they're going to talk about grants and funding of grants. And uh, uh, availability and all that stuff. It, Anyone would like to attend this? I will be out of town, or I would attend it, or I will be out of town. So, if there's anyone else that would like to do that, there's an outfit that can hold a suit and sign up for that. I think it would probably be a pretty important meeting. Um, and she's, uh, she's pretty good at what she does. That's uh, will be well worthwhile. Thank you, Joe. Somebody has something else. Oh, 
I might mention this. Uh, we have submitted uh, to the Register Herald, and it is online uh, for uh, uh, financial officer. Uh, we do have uh, a couple of resumes in hand already. Uh, we ask that the resumes be into us by the 25th of the month. Uh, so we can go over them and uh, see what uh, what we have and the people looking at us, Joe, myself, and uh, Cindy Hoffman. Um, having said that, Cindy's going to be out of town and I'm going to be out of town. So we would like to move the next meeting to the 13th of March. And hopefully on the 13th of March, we will be able to come to council with someone for that position to uh, start uh, training under Jane for the next couple of months before she leaves. So, set again. Yep, 7 o'clock on the 13th. On Wednesday, please. Anybody from the audience have anything? Yes? Uh, I walked through the Dollar General, the job supervisor, and walked through it. <clears throat> First thing I noticed is no su suppression system, sprinkler system. And I was wondering why. Where uh, is it? I am not the man to answer that question for you, Mr. Carlotti. That is a state building, so that has to be state requirements. And I'm sure Dollar General builds them all over the country, and they're going to be state requirements if they're required to do so. Well, I just thought so that. So that's the best answer I can give you. Mm -hmm. We're not qualified to answer that. But it's finished. It's finished inside. Well, when I went in, they was just about they was getting ready for gondolas, but they was going uh, shoot the floor with, with the, the clear silver. Yeah. And then paint the stripes and stuff. They put the gondolas up and start stocking them. Did you really go? Depending on the style that they use, it may not be, you know, it still may be padded yet. I can tell you from past experience that I've had that it, normally if it's not over 5,000 square feet, you're not required to have a water suppression system. But it's under 5,000. Is it now? I, 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 can say I was thinking along those lines myself, yes. But that would be the wrong people to answer that. They have to be state code down there, so I'm sure whatever they're doing is, is up to stuff. So we'll be expecting that too. Right. Right. Yeah, yeah I think uh, yeah. letters has been, the letter has been sent out to all businesses that the fire department is going to be sent to the fire department. I received one, so at the moment. Is there uh, anything going on with the um, subway? I do building that they're I supposedly. I know nothing about taking place there so mm -hmm. I answer that. Did we need a motion to accept the reservation or um, yeah. Do we well thank I, you really. I assumed we did that's why I didn't want to thank you. I don't uh, believe without it. Yeah. Not that I hate not, not that I want to see him go with it. Oh I didn't want you to trust me. I, I didn't I didn't want to see I just wanted, wanted, wanted the procedure. Uh, you, already, you, know. you did make the newspaper one. <laughs> oh, Okay, uh, I do need a motion from council to accept the resignation of uh, Mayor Hoffman. I'll make it. Wait. No, go ahead. I'll make a motion to accept his resignation. Roll call, please. Uh, Joe. Yes. Bill. Yes. Kim. Yes. Ralph. Yes. Thank you, Ralph. I would have forgot that. If there's nothing else, I need a motion to adjourn. I'm moving. <laughs> I finally got one in. <laughs> second. I'll second. Roll call, please. Ralph? Yes. Tim? Yes. Yes. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you. Well, they did, they did a good job. Also, yeah. Yeah. Oh, sorry. Yeah. 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 Okay. Yeah. Somebody else is still out. I'm going to be out of town, so I can't go. Probably going to be pretty informal with my and stuff and stuff like that. <laughs> Before you do anything on that truck, let me check. Sometimes you can reach out. I can't do anything. I can't do anything. I can't do anything. I can't do anything.